Hey everyone, let's take another look at the z-score. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about what exactly is that and not knowing at what point to look at. And so I um, was working with a student today and I had a um, kind of an epiphany, if you will, of maybe making this make sense. So I'm just going to record this and hopefully it will, will help some people. Um, when you are working uh, with or the times that you work with z-scores is all relevant to working with this normal distribution okay remembering that in a normal distribution I've got things that I, I will always know I know the mean in this case 21.2 that's a z-score of zero zero standard deviations I know that the standard deviation according to this is 5 so I know this is 26.2 that's a z-score of 1 a z-score of 2 would just be adding another 5 a z-score of 3 adding a 5 again 36.2 and I can do the same thing going the the other direction subtracting 5 each time okay now these are the, this table represents ACT scores. So you probably all, um, or a lot of you have probably taken the ACT so you can recognize this. And you'll notice that right here is 50%. All right, a Z-score of zero, the mean is 21.2. That means 50% of people get a um, ACT score less than 21.2 and 50% get one that's more. Now whether we're working with ACT values or in some of the things we've done before like miles per gallon or uh, BMI or anything that you could be calculating when you have the actual value like your height or um, number of Cheerios you eat per day. All of those things are values for X, where you are going to find like, well, if I have an ACT score of this, or if I have miles per gallon, or if my height, or if I eat this number of Cheerios, that's my value for X. And I usually compare it to the value of X bar or mu, the mean. And I'm like, well, I'm above average or below average. The z-score allows us to get to a more specific result. So you are always going to go from a value, and if I go through this chart, I'm going to go into a z-score, and then I will go from a z-score to a percentage. And that's what's found in this portion of the chart is the, the percentage of things. Now I could also go the other way. Sometimes they tell us the percentage and we have to go back to figure out how many that is. And we're going to do one of the, each of those. And no matter what, in order for me to get from an actual value to a percent, I have to go through the z-score. All right. So that z-score is really important and we're going to get there um, whether we start at a value and get to the z-score or start at a percentage and get to the z-score and work backwards. So both ways we end up going through that. So here's the idea going back to the ACT. Let's say that I scored a 27 on my ACT. All right. I can look over on this chart and notice that while one standard deviation is 26.2, I scored somewhere right here. My question is, here's my 27. My question is, how many people or what percent scored less? So notice I'm starting with an X. I have to go to a Z-score and then use that Z-score to go to a percentage. All right. So the idea always with the formula is never going to change. I need to know. Um, when this case I'm looking for a z-score because I have the x. My x is 27. So 27 minus 21.2 divided by standard deviation of 5. So I'll throw those in here. And 
and I get a z-score of 1.16. Now in order for me to, to work with that, I now have to go and say, well, what does that z-score mean? So I'm going to grab a PDF and say, here is my PDF, and I'm looking for that z-score of 1.16. And i got to scroll up so you can see the top. So I'm going across the 1.1 until I get to here, 1.16, and I'm looking and seeing that it's 87.7%. So I'm just going to go and write that down. All right, so I started with X, I found the Z-score, and then I used the table in order to tell me the percent. And that tells me that there is 87.7% of people that are below my score. That also tells me that only 12.3% of people scored higher than my score. All right, so that's when I, I start with a score. I can do this same thing, only I could start with an idea like, well, tell me, I want to know what percent of people or what score um, do the top 10% of people get? So now I'm starting here with the top 10%. And the only interpretation I need to remember is I know my top 10%. I don't know exactly where they are, but I'm just going to put over here somewhere is the top 10%, which means if I were right here, there is 90% of people below me and 10% of people above me. So what's my score? Well, now I'm going backwards. Start with that percent, find the z-score, and then work backwards to get x. So once again, pulling up our table, I have to find 90%. And it looks like in my table that my two closest values are right here. Um, if I were to look really carefully, I would notice that this one is closer. So 1.2, because if I go all the way across, that's 1.2, and then if I look up, it's 1.28. All right, that's my z-score. So I've done the first step. I've gone from my percent to my z-score. But now when I look at this formula, the thing I don't know is my actual score. So I'm going to put this in 1.28 equals my actual score minus the mean divided by 5. And I'm going to work backwards to get it. I'm first of all going to multiply both sides by 5. And I'll end up with 6.4 equals x minus 21.2. And then I'll add 21.2 to both sides and get 27.6 equals x. All right, so my ACT score must have been a 27.6. I don't know if ACT scores actually do a 0.6, so I suppose I would say approximately 20, 28 would be my score. If I want to be in the top 10% of people, I'd have to score above a 27.6, which might mean I haven't taken the ACT in a long time, I have to score a 28. All right, so once again, regardless of what you're doing, you are going to either start at an x value, use the formula to get to a z-score, and then use the table in order to get to a percentage, or you're going to start at a percentage, work backwards to get a z-score, and then work backwards to get that x, always using this formula. And remember, that's sigma, standard deviation. The last thing to remember is sometimes you don't have to go all the way. If they ever ask the question, how many standard deviations, that is really telling you z. Z is the number of standard deviations. If I look at my table again, one of the things I would point out is that here is a z-score of 0, and it's 50%. If I think about that with my table here, 50% is always a z-score of 0. It's zero standard deviations. I can, If I get a z-score that ends up being 1, it means I'm one standard deviation. If I get a z-score that ends up being 2, 
that means I'm two standard deviations. Therefore, a z-score of 1.3 means I am 1.3 standard deviations away from the center. So be careful when you're looking at it. You're always going to be asked to find one of these three things. You're either looking for the percent of people or you're looking for an actual score. Usually when you're doing this, you're going to, you're going to be starting with a score, going to z, going to percent, or you're going to start with a percent, go to z, go to a score. Sometimes you stop in the middle if they ask how many standard deviations, but that's very uh, relatively uncommon. Hopefully that will help um, clear up the z-scores uh, one last time.